Hi, uh, I'm Len Witt, and I'm with the Juvenile Justice Information Exchange, and I'm with Martin Cas Castro. He is the chairman of the United States Civil Rights Commission, and I have some questions about juvenile justice and some of the areas that you see that are affecting kids. Especially, we're here in Georgia, they have a new immigration law that's pretty tough. What kind of effects does that have on juvenile justice, uh, in your opinion? Well, in my personal opinion, these aren't necessarily the views of the United States Commission on Civil Rights. I can tell you personally, from what I've seen in my activities and my travels, as well as my personal uh, interactions, what I see happening with these with these laws, there's it's a complex system. So when you see an increase in racial profile, or hate crimes, you try to track what is the cause of that. And you look at various factors that implicate that. So I believe personally that one of the things that we see when we see this heightened anti-immigrant rhetoric, regardless of whether a particular proposal or law passes, it creates an atmosphere wherein individuals' civil rights could be violated or individuals could see themselves being victims of racial profiling or hate crimes or bullying. And um, with the civil Civil Rights Commission, uh, recently we did a study on bullying, and in the interim between the briefing and the report being published, I, at my, in my own family, saw the reality of what happens in this country right now. My son, who is a 10-year-old, just started middle school, he was bullied by some classmates who came up to him and demanded to know whether or not he was a legal or illegal alien. And they wanted to know whether, uh, when he refused to answer that question, they then asked him what his national origin was. And when he refused to answer that, they asked him to put his arms up against the wall because they were going to frisk him. Luckily, the situation got diffused, but that happens to individuals every day, unfortunately. It happened to my son, and I'll tell you, I knew, and my wife knew, the system and how it works and how to enforce and protect our child. But how many children out there experience something like this and they don't have someone to advocate for them? Or if they do, that person, for reasons of language or culture or other barriers, don't know how to be able to enforce their rights or may not even know their rights. And for me, therefore, on a personal level, uh, the work that we do at the Commission is, is not just about an abstract public policy or constitutional issue, although those are important issues. For me, it's about the real impact on people's lives. And so when I look at issues that I'm seeing as I travel uh, on issues related to immigrant justice or uh, issues related to what the Islamic and, and uh, Islamic American and Arab American communities are going through, to me, uh, it's about the real lives that those individuals face. So it is my hope as chairman of the United States Commission on Civil Rights as we move forward to be able to uh, convince a majority of my colleagues on the commission to begin to look at some of these issues. Uh, we did look at bullying and we prepared a bipartisan report which can be found on our website at usccr.gov. Uh, we're working on a school discipline report now. Uh, we've just finished a briefing recently on the eminent domain, the uh, civil rights implications of eminent domain. We are about to start a briefing uh, for a statutory enforcement report on Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act and its enforcement given the new redistricting, as well as sex trafficking as a form of gender discrimination. So we've got a broad area of, of inquiry that we need to move forward on, and it's my hope that issues such as immigration and issues of um, the impact of 